Judith has the character kind of like water. She could always find a way to get her paintings to where she wanted, to find a house, go to Africa. So many borders that we couldn't cross, where Americans couldn't get through. But somehow she had the stubbornness to continue. And she still does, although the past quarter. Compañera de mi alma, sé que han pavimentado. I was always moving paintings because Judith painted hundreds and hundreds of paintings. I and mean, she paints so much that uh, we just kept carrying them around and storing them, carrying them around on boats through Africa, um, almost sinking sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> this painting went with me everywhere in Europe. I had a special thing for it. It always traveled with me. I think the only one that did. Ghost bird. She risked everything again and again and again. So many times she could have had security. People would have bought her paintings and she could have got famous and she, she ran away from it. So I sold everything. I gave up the gallery and we went to Europe. She was almost 50. And people don't understand that because she looks so young. What a big, courageous step to make a move with no security, with kids, and joining the gypsies and traveling and painting these heavy paintings all along the way. Very courageous. <laughs> In Spain, flamenco and prostitution and bullfight was all related. And Judith saw right away that that's where there was a lot of poetry in life, so she drew her paintings from that, and the gypsies loved her paintings. They felt she never took from that. She, always, she gave a lot back. You know. I, call, I call them my magic people, because they're all related. You know, like first cousins or something. It's a family, it's a family kind of. Well, I think the Harlequin is universal. You can find them everywhere. The clown is very necessary. Maybe it keeps people from going crazy, the clown. She always loved to have her tribe. The more, the better. You know, she never stayed more than two years. She was great with us when we were kids. She always asked about our dreams and took them incredibly seriously. She would look at our little paintings and and talk, talk to us about them in a more subjective way. She encourages all of us to think more subjectively. I always preferred to be with her than any other adult. She always had a lot of food around and the necessary things, but we didn't have bedtimes and the usual constraints that kids have. Judith always encouraged us to study something. She was a good mother, but she never stopped painting, too. And this was what people didn't, I think, gave her a hard time. How do you have a right to be a, an artist and have kids, too? It's like usually you choose one or the other, right? And Judith took both. One of my memories is the smell, the smell of paint and turpentine, and there was paint everywhere. I remember as a kid, it was just, I even get it on my hands. It was like we lived inside of the paint. She was always painting. It was very much natural, too. It wasn't like, okay, she's painting, we have to leave her alone, we could go talk to her. And she was very accessible, and it just seemed like part of life. Hey! 
Marrakesh was a very exciting place. Again, Judith living so much on the edge that she went right into the heart of the Kasbah Arab Quarter where you shouldn't live. It was paradise for Judith because it's like the living theater. All these people out there every day. Next door to me in Africa, for the whole village, she was the clown. She could do anything she wanted. So I pictured her juggling with a flower, with a flower. And her art came by itself. She had the secret of a sorceress, in the sense of an artist who knows how their images come. And that's why her art is, to me, has never become poor because she. She always enriches it with life, life.